up guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. I'm guessing you clicked on this video today because your mic is a little scuffed. <clears throat> so, something in my throat, it's nothing. So today I'll be showing you guys that are using Mac OS, whether or not you're on an Intel or M1 chip based system, how to improve your microphone audio quality for OBS streaming and recording purposes. For the video example, we're gonna be using the Fifine USB microphone, which comes with a built-in gain as well as a mute function. Okay guys, so what you're first gonna wanna do is plug in your USB microphone securely to your Mac computer. Now I say securely because there's a lot of adapters such as this one that I've used out there that you plug it in with these, these two prong ends to your USB-C ports where it just doesn't work well. The signal just cuts in and out and it's just not that great. So I recommend getting a nice USB-C hub so you can securely connect all the ports that you're looking to have connected to your laptop. Okay, so now that your microphone is plugged into your computer, you're gonna to wanna to open up OBS Studio. And then from here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have your microphone selected. So how do you do that? Go over to your settings, and then within here, go to the audio section, and then under one of your mic auxiliary audio devices, you're gonna to wanna to select that microphone that you just plugged in to your computer. Once you've done that, go ahead and select OK, and you should see it appear in your mixer as its own audio track. I'll now need to have a way to hear what this audio sounds like while I'm trying to edit it. So the best way that I recommend to do that so that you don't have to play with the filters and then go back and see what this sounds like and just this whole back and forth nonsense, just, no. Let's just keep it simple and take an example recording of what our mic sounds currently. So let's go ahead and press the start recording button and this is what I'm going to say. Subscribe to Midnight Man for the best streaming and gaming tech tutorials on YouTube. Now what I'm gonna do is add that recording as its own media source. Call it example mic, okay. Go ahead and browse for the file. So there it is. And I'm gonna make sure that this is looping so I can constantly be able to hear what my microphone is sounding like. And after that, just go ahead and select okay. Now that audio will be able to keep looping, but I don't hear it right now through my headphones. So what I'm gonna do is go to my advanced audio settings just by clicking on the settings icon, advanced audio settings. And then within here for my example mic, that clip I just added, I'm gonna make sure that I'm monitoring and outputting. So that way I'll be able to hear everything that's coming out of the speakers. Now that I can hear what the microphone audio sounds like, we can go ahead and start adding our filters to it. So to do that, just go ahead and click on the settings icon and go to filters. And within here, we're gonna wanna look under audio and video filters, and then just go ahead and select the plus button. And the first one we're gonna wanna start out with is the noise suppression filter. Adjusting the noise suppression filter will help cut out those annoying sounds that might be droning in the background, such as a fan to your PC or your PlayStation. We know how loud those things can get. So if that's something prevalent, most common in your audio, in your situation, then you're gonna to wanna to add a little bit of a suppression to it. But in my case, you know, my room is pretty quiet for the most part, so I don't need to add much of a suppression filter to it. But adjust this filter depending on the amount of noise that's in your recording space. If we go back and click on the plus button to add another filter under audio and video, we're gonna to wanna to add a noise gate. The two main options within this filter you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is the closed and open threshold. So the closed threshold will take account for if you go below a certain decibel level, then the audio will be cut off and it won't be able to be heard. Whereas the open threshold is the minimum decibel level that's set in order for the sound to come through. The default settings here are actually pretty good, but maybe let's say you have a noisy atmosphere for where you record. So you're gonna to wanna to increase your close threat threshold just a little bit so that anything under a negative 25 is completely muted. And then for your open threshold, you're gonna wanna have that meet maybe let's say a negative 18 or somewhere in that ballpark. You don't really wanna go much higher than that because then your, your voice will just start cutting out and it, and it won't sound very full. Since my atmosphere is overall pretty quiet, I'm comfortable keeping my close threshold at negative 35 and my open at negative 25. Once you play with these filters and get them where you want them to be, any of those weird background sounds should be kind of gone at this point and it should be sounding a lot cleaner. 
Now the next filter we're gonna add is a GEQ, which is also a graphic equalizer. Usually this comes in the form of a piece of hardware for audio engineers. They usually use this kind of stuff, but they have this in the form of software, which you can get installed to your Mac computer in the form of a VST plugin. For the video example, we're gonna be downloading the Vox & Joe Marvel GEQ, which is completely free to download, guys. Yes, I said it, it's completely free, and it really makes your voice sound better. It can, it can honestly sound like a, a studio just with using this equalizer software. I left the link to this page in the description below so you can go ahead and download this software for Mac as you can right here at, at this blue icon, download VST, VST3 for a Mac. Go ahead and select that so you can download the package. And just so you guys are aware from a compatibility perspective, you need to have Mac OS version 10.11 or later 64-bit Intel or Rosetta 2 support, which means it'll work on those M1 chips, which is awesome. Now, I apologize in advance for those of you guys that are on Streamlabs OBS. It doesn't have these kind of plug-in support, which is why I like OBS more than Streamlabs OBS. I know it's another story, but uh, with OBS, you can put these plugins in to have that extra control to your streams and to your audio and all that stuff. Once you've downloaded the .dmg, go ahead and open it and you'll see the required VST files that you're going to need for this plugin to work. So you're going to need to access the folders on your hard disk drive. So an easy way to do that is going into your Finder application preferences. And then in the sidebar tab, if you look under the location section, you'll see your computer name sitting right there. So make sure that that's checked off and then you'll see it appear under the location sections within the Finder application. From there, just go ahead and select the Macintosh drive, then go to your library, then go to the audio folder, and then within here, you're gonna wanna go to plugins. After you're here, go ahead to the VST folder and then go back over to that downloaded folder that you just had with the VST plugins. Grab those and move them over to the VST folder like you see at me doing in the video here. You may need to authenticate, go ahead and do that. Now that we have that all squared away, we can go back into our OBS and add this plugin as a filter. So all we have to do is select the plus button again. And this time we're gonna go to VST2 plugin. And then the drop down option down here is asking to please select the plugin. So we're just gonna select the plugin that we just added to that VST folder. So just go ahead and select that. And then we're gonna open the plugin interface. You should see another little window pop open with all of the equalizer features. To give you guys a general rundown with how this works, the left side are your low frequencies, the right side are your high frequencies. And what you usually wanna do to balance out the audio to bring out that deeper voice to sound really like you're on a radio, you're gonna to wanna to create more of an upside down arc shape with these dials here. So just go ahead, keep listening to your audio and kinda of just adjust for how your particular voice sounds so that it, it sounds optimal, it sounds best for your recordings. There are also some presets in here. If you select this presets button up on the top, on the left side there, one of the presets brighter and bassy is a good option. If you go ahead and select activate, go back, you can see it created that similar shape that I was just talking about. That's sounding pretty good, but I'm just gonna make some fine tune adjustments to kind of fit the way that that microphone is sounding right now. Subscribe to Midnight Man for the best streaming and gaming tech tutorials on YouTube. Subscribe to Midnight Man for the best streaming and gaming tech tutorials on YouTube. Whenever you're done using the equalizer, just go back over to your filters window and then select close plugin interface and that'll close it out for you. So now there's one more filter we're going to need to add before it's all said and done. This should be the last filter you add, by the way. Don't do this one in reverse or first. No, don't do it. The last one you're gonna to wanna to add here is the compressor. And this essentially will balance out your audio 
as a whole. It'll create a consistent speaking volume for your microphone, turning down the loudest parts of your voice and turning up the quietest. So the threshold here is pretty important as it'll set the maximum noise level for your microphone. The ratio you'll set will determine how loud you want that audio to be once your audio crosses the threshold. I know a lot of you guys are hearing that peaking subscribe sound, and that's where I can kind of adjust things so that I don't peak in the future. So I feel very comfortable setting my ratio at about 25 and my threshold at about a negative 17 decibel level to where that sounds a lot better. You can hear that edginess cut off a lot more. Subscribe to Midnight Man for the best streaming and gaming tech tutorials on YouTube. If your audio is just not sounding right, you may want to adjust the attack on your audio, which changes when your audio starts and increases in volume. If your audio is very soft, then I would check out the output gain and increase it or lowering it depending on your levels. And you can check out your levels right here. We're looking at the example mic, by the way, and it's just going into the yellowish red area. You really want this to stay right within the yellow here as you want your voice to be over everything else, but you also don't want it to peak at the same time. So make sure you have it within that yellow section there as much as you can. But after you've gotten all four of these filters to be where you want it to be and your audio is sounding the way that you like it, go ahead and just close out of this. And then within this example mic right here, right click that, go ahead and copy the filters. And if we look below that at the actual microphone audio input within the mixer here, go ahead and right click that and then paste the filters. And now if I go into my filters, you'll see that all of those audio filters that we just manipulated have been applied to my microphone audio input. I'm using the Elgato Wave microphone right now to record the commentary for this video, and it was about $170, $180 or so. Let's switch to the FIFI microphone and see what it sounds like in three, two, one. This is the FIFI USB microphone with all the filters that we just applied to it. How does it sound? Is it still peaking? Does it sound a little bit better? How do you guys compare this to the Elgato Wave microphone? Does it sound any good? Y'all let me know in the comments right now how we did just now. But there you guys have it. That is how you make your cheap USB microphone sound like a professional studio grade microphone completely for free on macOS using OBS Studio. If you guys came to enjoy this video, make sure you hit the video with a big thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel with the post notifications on if you're new around here and you wanna see more videos just like this. If you guys are having any issues, problems, or maybe you just wanna say what's on your mind, feel free to leave a comment down below. I love hearing what you guys have to say. Also, my socials are linked below as well in the description in case you wanna reach out to me directly. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.